Okay, I found the problem on my old oval. It was actually this little one right here, this washer, which sits in here, but I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But um, right now it's driving absolutely perfectly and the carburetor functions as it should. So that is just so nice, but we're gonna test it out in a minute. But for a start here, let me take you through the sort of process of finding this error and why is this little washer here is sort of <laughs> the main problem. Okay guys, actually the thing I did in the start was to sort of start out with the ignition. But on this one it's a little tricky. Let me see if I can just get the camera in a little better angle here. It's actually a little tricky because on this model right here it's an automatic transmission car which means it hasn't it hasn't got the the markings of a sort of traditional engine because usually if you follow me here it has this little maybe it's a little hard to see but down there there's an opening down there and it has this little sort of ball it's together with the spline so you can see now the engine is you know cylinder one is in the top of the block which it should be when you sort of correct the ignition on this on these cars. So the thing I did with mine was actually that I took and just, you know, spin the engine around, put a little sort of rounded screwdriver in here to sort of feel, okay, now cylinder one, which is this one right here, is in the top of the block. And then, I applied my little tool here, which is actually just a test lamp. And you can sort of, right now it's glowing. That means that these guys are touching each other. That means there's no spark. Then there is a screw down here on the lower side. If you loosen that up, you can actually turn this thing right here with your hands. And then when this and this marking right here, it's maybe a little hard to spot, this marking right there, it's when they are lined up and you sort of turn it to this one glows and stops glowing, you know, then there is the spark. Because then I know with myself, okay, the, the ignition wasn't sort of perfectly adjusted, but it was where it's supposed to be. So I start, out would just do that. Then I took the car for a test drive and found that, that the problem was still there. So I thought to myself, okay, now I know the transmission part is set mostly correctly, then I would sort of move on to the carburetor and start just, you know, taking it a step at a time. I actually made sort of a post on, on one of these sort of oval groups here. And a guy told me it was like a really good idea just to take it like in steps. Like always sort of not being clever and fixing one little bit, another little bit, but taking it step by step. So I start out with okay saying now I know the transmission the ignition, sorry, the in ignition is set correctly. Then I moved on to the, the carburetor. But let me take this apart so I can show you exactly what I did. Okay guys, now the top of the carburetor is off here, so we can better see it. Let me just really gently take away the gasket. It sits on top here. I did a couple of things to this carburetor actually. I changed out the acceleration membrane that sits in here. And that's the one that sort of squirts the gasoline in at low revs. And I thought to myself back so remember, I've been struggling with this for a while, that maybe this one wasn't sort of... This mechanism here wasn't functionally properly. So I changed it out, so that is brand new. Again, I know this right now works, and I can also see it work when I sort of hit the throttle. Then I have sort of cleaned it out many, many times, give it a lot of sort of injection trim and clean, just to sort of, you know, clean out all the sort of injection rods here 
through the carburetor. And another important thing, I took this out. Remember, you remembered from my last video that I sort of was a little around this little spring leaf here. And I actually read up on it and this gun right here is supposed to open at 90 degrees Celsius. But um, yeah, I, think to my, I thought to myself, you know what, I want to eliminate that as well. I know it's the right thing to have it on because it stops it from drowning when the car is hot and you have to start it up again. But right now I actually just mounted a screw here in the bottom instead of this. So I just plug the hole down here. And if you haven't seen the video where I discussed this issue, please go up in the corner because then you can see that as well. But um, yeah, so this right now is plugged in. We know the ignition system is sort of how it should be. The acceleration pump here is also fixed and mended. So I thought to myself, okay, this all of this is okay. Another thing is actually this little line tubing right here. This tube here goes to a little vacuum chamber on the ignition side. Let me just take the camera here for a second so we can follow it. Goes from there all the way around the engine and to this guy right here. It sets the timing of the ignition a little bit back every time you sort of hit the throttle and it's for sort of minimizing over fuel consumption and it's also to to make sure you got the most perfect condition ignition wise for your car a thing a good tip i got was actually to just take this guy if i can there it is take this guy out right here and just just try to if you can suck air through this line here, then you know this guy over in the other part here is broken. And that's not a good thing. So you have to make sure that this line here is absolutely sealed. Because then when it creates under pressure here, it sets the timing. So we know this one is working as well, which is really nice. So then I will down to sort of the last thing, and this one was quite tricky on this one. I know for a fact that the older cars didn't have plastic. I don't know what, I actually don't know what it's called in English, but let me just take it out. This guy here wasn't from the factory in, in plastic. It has been in some sort of a metal. But the thing is, because I tried this many times over, that when I bought in the car, the, the gasoline wouldn't sort of fill up the float bowl here. And I thought to myself, something must be wrong. And I found out that this guy right here is having sort of a bit of the wrong measurements to this carburetor. And this, this is here where the washer comes into play. Because if I take the lid, this is the carburetor lid. And there you have the little sort of pops out and it goes up and closes. So this one sits here and it sort of works in that way. But there wasn't enough room for enough fuel to get into this chamber. So I thought to myself, what can I do? And this is here where I saw there was this little washer placed under this valve here. So I screwed this out. This is a 14 in uh, metric measurements. I took this out, took this washer out and put it back together. And what do you know? It works. So it was actually that the float bowl was a little too high, set a little too high in the carburetor. But um, let me put this back together again. And uh, let's take the car for a spin and uh, let's see how it goes when I take it on the road. So um, yeah. Okay, now the carburetor here is put back together again. Let me just make sure that everything is tight now as it should be. I think it is, more or less. Yeah, it looks nice. Last but not least, before I forget it, I want to address this guy right here. Because there's a vent here that going to the brakes over on this side down here actually. It's a little hard to see because 
over there. And there is a marking on this where you can actually see which way the flow is, is going to be. Because, because this is have to be under pressured, this side. So it has to sort of suck air this way in and keeping it from going the other way out. You can use the same trick as I show you with this guy. Take it off, try to gently make under pressure and see if anything leaks. Another tip is actually when you start the car, has it drives for a little bit, you can take this guy out right here and it has to get like this suction sound on this connection here because that means there's under pressure in the system. If it doesn't do that, it may be a way in to sort of sneak in air to the mixture here. Okay guys, now the air filter here is back on the vehicle again. Everything is connected, so for us right now it's just to sort of turn her over and see if she starts. She runs a little fast, but that's due to the control arm when she's cold. Let's try to give it some gas. Feels like it should to me, but uh, there's one only one real way to test it, and that is actually to taking her on a little test drive. Let's see if it if we have fixed it. So um, let me give it some gas here, and there is no problem, which is so nice. And I'm just gonna take it for a little test drive to actually sort of see and feel how she feels. It's just so much nicer when you actually have a car when the speeder is working and it's not dying every time you put your foot down. She rips a little slow when she's cold and low revs, but uh, it's okay. Let me tell you, this automatic transmission box is just glorious. Oh yeah. It's a little wet today, so I don't gonna drive the whole town around here, but just sort of make a turn down here. So a good way again to test if our carburetor is fixed. Remember before it died, every time I hit the gas, right now there is absolutely no problems whatsoever. Pulls amazingly, absolutely amazingly. And remember, guys, this car is actually my daily driver. I drive this every day, so it has to work. You know what? It always brings a smile to my face, like always driving this vehicle. It's amazing. And even more now because the carburetor is fixed and it actually drives like it's supposed to. So um, this is just absolutely amazing. And guys, as always, thank you for watching. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, go down below, hit that subscribe button. That will uh, that sort of keep the channel alive. So um, and also feel free. 
if you have questions if there's actually things about these cars that you maybe sort of think okay that could be nice to know there's need to knows and nice to knows let's see if we can cut, get it in here it's a little muddy today but i think we manage there it was and then we're back in the garage thank you for watching bye